Hello YouTube and welcome to another AV Helicopters video. Today we're looking into becoming a helicopter pilot. Now, you may have seen a helicopter fly over, watch one of our videos, or even seen a helicopter up close, perhaps even being a passenger, and thought, well, how do I get to fly one of those? Well, if that's the case, stay tuned. First thing to say is that where you are in the world makes a difference in terms of the training and the license that you go for. So, for example, if you're within Europe, then you would go for an EASA license. In America, they have the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. In Canada, they have the TCCA. So that would change the type of license that you get. But in this video, we'll just stick with the PPL, EASA, PPL-8. What is this license? What, what can you do with it? What can you go and fly? Well, the PPL is a civil aviation, UK civil aviation approved training course designed to take a pilot who has no aviation experience at all and give them the theoretical and the flying skills necessary to obtain a license. Once completed, it allows you to pilot a helicopter for private non-revenue flights with passengers. Now, if you own your own helicopter, then that means you can fly it, or if, uh, if you don't, then you can go to a flying club or a company or flight school and go and hire, self-fly hire a helicopter. Now, the PPL course itself consists of about 30 different exercises and nine theoretical knowledge examinations. There is a bit of work that has to be done. The minimum duration is 45 hours of flight time. And now that's broken down into some dual, some of it's solo on your own, and some of it's also navigation flights as well. And the instructor guides you through a number of air exercises that really help to build up your hands-on flying. Starting off with perhaps learning to hover, um, flying in the circuits, taking off and landing, and then moving a little bit further field to your first solo. First solo flight is something you'll never forget. Then moving on to navigation, dealing with emergencies, auto rotations, what happens when the engine stops, when some of the warning lights come on, and then more advanced maneuvers, such as quick stops, uh, st steep turns, or for example, um, dealing with vortex wing situation or dealing with private sites, landing in private sites off the airfield, which is obviously the key thing that a helicopter is built to do, different from an aircraft, to land somewhere that does not have a runway. It's absolutely fantastic to do. And then finally, obviously passing your PPL skills test. The training for a PPL has to take place at either an ATO authorised training organisation or a DTO designated training organisation. Now there's nine ground exams. Uh, let's go through them. Air law. So this is really the, the legal infrastructure, the, the creation of ICAO um, in 1944. And how do we all fly around without bumping into each other, for example? Next up, aircraft general knowledge. Well, this is talking all about how um, aircraft work from uh, the engines, from the flight controls, um, to the actual structure of the, the helicopter and, and aircraft. Next up, communications. How do we talk to each other? Um, uh, using uh, funny code, the phonetic alphabet. How do we ask for permission to go through controlled airspace, for example? Next up, flight performance and planning. Well, how do we know how fast the helicopter can go, how much fuel it's gonna use, how high it can go, um, and how do we know that we're actually going to end up at our location, our destination, with enough fuel on board? What's our fuel burn gonna be? Um, human performance, though, is all about the pilot. Um, what things impact the pilot's performance, his ability to fly the helicopter. So this is uh, talking about stress, fatigue, drugs, alcohol limits, the effect of altitude on the pilot's uh, ability to fly, for example. Um, so really important stuff. Next up, meteorology. Now this one's quite an interesting one. Clouds, weather. Um, has a huge impact on where we can go and, and how high we can go. Um, if we can't see where we're going, can we fly? And the answer um, when we're flying visually is no, we can't. So it's really good to understand the backstory or understand how clouds are formed, different types of clouds, and understand why we get some of the weather we do in the United Kingdom, for example. Um, but where does rain come from? Where does snow come from? Um, what's fog? So quite an interesting one. Navigation. Navigation uh, is all about how to get from point A to point B um, using a range of different navigational techniques, um, be it dead reckoning, um, using maths, finding out the impact of the wind 
uh, on the the track of an aircraft, for example. So very important, and uh, should usually be taken before the navigation section of the PPL. Next up, operational procedures, very similar to air law um, in terms of how do we operate um, safely uh, in the airspace? What do, how do we um, work with the other aircraft that are around us? And then finally, principles of flight. Now, this is all about aerodynamics and how does a helicopter stay upright? How do wings work? Um, what's angle of attack? So, very important to understand some of the specific points around helicopter flight. Now, the flight training um, has a couple of limitations. Uh, the minimum age to get a PPL is 17, although you can go solo from the age of 16 once you've got a medical. The, the training itself takes 45 hours, and 10 of those hours is done solo, on your own. Um, five of those 10, you need to be doing some navigation, including one solo cross-country flight. So this is where you're sent um, on a minimum flight of uh, navigation flight of 100 nautical miles, and you've got to land at three different airfields, in effect, um, which is uh, quite a great um, feat if you're learning to fly and you're sent off uh, into the distance by your instructor. The rest of that uh, 45 hours, well, more than 25 hours has to be done dual. So 45 is the absolute minimum uh, for getting your PPL uh, in a helicopter. And 35 of the 45 hours um, of that flight instruction must be in the same helicopter as the test. The helicopter you get tested in, well, that's the helicopter type that goes onto your license. So, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of people learn to fly on the Robinson series of helicopters, piston-powered, the R22, the two-seater, or the Robinson 44, the four-seater, usually because they're a little bit cheaper. And if you want to convert from one aircraft to another, then you do a type rating, say, for example. If you're upgrading from a Robinson 22 to a 44, you suddenly want to take some friends or family on board, and you want some extra seats, some extra range, well, then that's a five-hour type rating course. Likewise, if you want to go from the 44 to the R66 and get your first turbine type rating, well, that would be another five hour type rating course. You can only fly the helicopter type that is endorsed on your license. Every year, you also have to keep that type rating current. So, what happens next? You've got your license. Well, the first thing is to consider the PPL as a license to learn. There's Lots of different things you can do once you get your license. A lot of people learn on the Robinson series of helicopters. They are um, piston powered. The, and typically these are used in, quite a lot in the training environment. Other aircraft you might see in the training um, uh, environment are the Schweitzer 300, CBI or C. Um, or recently the Gumball G2 Cabri has, uh, has started to, to be a regular uh, feature in UK flight schools. But, once you've got your license, you might want to spread your wings and learn to fly, for example, your first turbine helicopter. So the R66 is a great stepping stone to go from the uh, Robinson piston to the world of turbine powered helicopters. Likewise, the Bell 206 Jet Ranger or the MD500 have always been popular choices as the first turbine type um, once you have your license. You might also want to extend your enjoyment of flying into the hours of darkness. So you might want to go for a night rating. Um, or alternatively, you might want to develop your career and go for a commercial pilot's license or even flight instructor rating. Now in between here, um, there are some minimum hours requirements. So you may see pilots um, doing additional flights with the instructors to build some hours. Now, some, some great places or some great ways to build your skills. Um, when you're hour building, you might see uh, pilots learning to fly on the London heli route, for example, because it's challenging from a navigation and a communication point of view. Or um, perhaps mountain flying and learning the local variations of the weather and dealing with the adverse effects on performance that altitude introduces. I really hope this video has been useful and interesting and if you'd like me to go into any of the topics into a little bit more detail then please leave a comment in the section below. Until next time, fly safe.